I welcome all of you to my new lecture session on chemistry of uh, vitamins. So here uh, today we will discuss in detail about ascorbic acid or vitamin C. In the history, as I told you, in the remaining, uh, in as in just like in the case of uh, other vitamins, every vitamin was discovered while studying one or the other kind of a disease. So here scurvy is a peculiar disease uh, observed in case of uh, sailors way back in 1600s where in case of scurvy swollen and bleeding gums loose teeth hemorrhaging under the skin and slowed healing of wounds and more susceptibility to disease are some of the peculiar uh, symptoms they observed in uh, all these though it was discovered in 1600s uh, no very few uh, no uh, drugs were discovered otherwise very few uh, uh, remedies were discovered and uh, in 1800s in the first part of 1800s scientists confirmed that citrus fruits can reverse the symptoms of uh, scurvy and uh, in 1930 s Paul Georgi who is well known uh, for his discoveries in water soluble vitamins he actually first crystallized vitamin C and established correlation between vitamin C and scurvy. For these studies, uh, he was awarded Nobel Prize in uh, Physiology or Medicine in 1937. His actual research work is in biological oxidation reduction reactions. In 1937, Nobel Prize was shared between Paul Georgi and Krebs. Oh, now let's see how actually uh, it was isolated. Vitamin C was first isolated from uh, lemon juice. They usually take lemon juice and then add lead acetate so that this lead acetate will precipitate along with uh, many other chemicals uh, uh, and uh, vitamin C will also be precipitated. So they take this precipitate and then treat it with ammonia at pH 7 to bring it up to pH 7 so that uh, lead salt of ascorbic acid exclusively is separated. They collect this and then add hydrochloric acid so that lead will be converted to lead chloride and precipitated and ascorbic acid because it is water soluble it will stay in the solution. Now they take the solution and then concentrate. So here then we need to extract it with an organic solvent like N-butanol because um, as you all knew lemon juice still possess uh, volatile oils. So these volatile oils or otherwise essential oils are to be removed. Once you remove these oils, then add ethyl alcohol to precipitate ascorbic acid. So this ascorbic acid is precipitated in a fine powder like structure. So uh, to facilitate precipitation, we need to go for centrifugation. Upon centrifugation, obtained pellet or otherwise the precipitate is collected evaporated to dryness and then recrystallize it with ethyl acetate ether mixture. So this is the way uh, how uh, actually ascorbic acid is obtained in the beginning. But here word of caution is we need to maintain anaerobic environment means exposure to air is to be minimized. Second one is temperature is to be reduced or otherwise we have to keep the temperature below room temperature. Okay, So because vitamin C uh, for your information vitamin C is a uh, is a widely available vitamin among us all vitamins this is highly uh, no widely available vitamin the second one is it is highly unstable okay among all the uh, vitamins we have vitamin c is most susceptible okay to both air as well as temperature light okay so that's the reason why we have to be very careful while uh, isolating vitamin c Vitamin C is widely available as I told you because it is available in almost all kinds of food materials. Uh, um, um, you know, uh, citrus fruits are classically known for their uh, you know, vitamin C resource. Uh, we also have uh, uh, many other umbilical fruits are there and black carrot and many of the green leafy vegetables also possess vitamin C. But uh, don't be surprised if I say that paprika or chilies are a rich resource for vitamin C. In fact, Paul Georgi uh, could elucidate the structure of vitamin C because he found uh, uh, 
no uh, paprika is a rich resource for vitamin c because isolation of uh, vitamin c from lemon juice is a uh, 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 is a very tough process actually because vitamin c uh, cannot be isolated very easily but he could isolate vitamin c very easily from uh, paprika the next one is uh, chemistry of vitamin c and from where we start we always start with molecular formula okay uh, vitamin c uh, molecular formula is c6h8o6 it is so very simple but uh, very interesting also because for six carbon six oxygens are there when uh, all these structural elucidation happened in 1930 to 1940 so that is the time period where carbohydrate chemistry is also uh, no flourishing beginning actually Uh, and uh, it looks like uh, a carbohydrate so that's the reason why in the beginning paul georgi and uh, the remaining scientists who were working with vitamin c named it as hexuronic acid hex means six uh, and uh, acid means it is an acidic substance so they named it as an acidic okay hexuronic acid and in the structural elucidation ascorbic acid was first uh, tested for its uh, acid base nature so they found like it is forming a mono sodium or mono potassium salt with regular bases like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide so they first uh, you know thought like uh, they had a carboxylic acid containing compound but uh, ascorbic acid gave positive reaction with the hydro um, you know, 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrogen here they got hydrogen so this is a classical reaction for Uh, obtaining uh, you know the classical reaction for uh, carbonyl carbon uh, containing compounds but this compound did not give positive reaction with this kipps reagent so thereby we can uh, minus this uh, aldehyde group so the compound contains a ketone group and next interesting reaction obtained is uh, violet color with uh, ferric chloride so what does it indicate ferric chloride is a diagnostic uh, reagent for identification of enols so whenever there is an enol or a phenol it reacts with ferric chloride and give violet color uh, complex okay uh, these observations all of them together it is an acidic compound it contains ketone it contains an enol so there is a possibility of keto enol tautomerism present in this compound so there is a possibility of instead of carboxylic acid there is also a possibility of enol but here enols are weak acids okay uh, but the, when they determined ascorbic acid pk pka pka is approximately 4.3 whereas uh, formic acid for formic acid it is 3.75 for acetic acid it is 4.75 its pka is falling it has two pkas one is in 4.35 the second one is in 11.25 okay so its pk value is closely related to uh, carboxylic acid so they thought like it could be a carboxylic acid or even if it is an enol it should be very strong okay uh, means uh, an enol flanked by electron withdrawing group so that increases the acidity of the compound like a phenol and picric acid okay so this is what they observed their observation and the next very important observe uh, no result obtained okay which helped in the structural elucidation of ascorbic acid is oxidative degradation reactions ascorbic acid upon degradation with the kmno4 it they got two compounds one is oxalic acid two carbon unit containing fragment the other one is l3onic acid so both these compounds are known compounds at that time l3onic acid upon oxidation gave tartaric acid tartaric acid is a very Uh, no uh, regular chemical at that time so this observation confirmed that the compound the six carbon units are actually uh, two uh, units connected by a double bond like this because kmno4 is a specific reagent which attacks which is known to attack double bonds okay uh, and in this fact is further confirmed by formation of a mono ozonide ozonolysis okay what is the pre um you no know, reaction which is uh, is used here when you add ozone it adds across uh, double bond so that a ozonide is formed ozonide is a five membered ring structure with the carbon carbon and three oxygens connected to each other 
this ozonide upon degradation will give you ozonolysis products okay so formation of a mono ozonide and these observations confirmed that there is a double bond in the compound ascorbic acid when they have taken this is a, again another uh, critical observation uh, upon treatment with the concentrated hydrochloric acid resulted in formation of porphyraldehyde carbon dioxide and um, two moles of water so formation of porphyraldehyde is really interesting because uh sugars like hexoses and pentoses upon treatment with strong acids they are known to give porphyraldehyde and its derivatives so this observation and all the remaining chemical reactions whatever we have seen so far uh, clearly indicated that uh, ascorbic acid is in one or the other way closely related to carbohydrate chemistry presence of hydroxy groups because carbohydrate means what a carbohydrate is a polyhedric aldehyde or a ketone we found like aldehyde group ketone group is there and further so many other hydroxy groups are still remaining you know four more uh, no hydroxy groups are still there so we need to know how actually hydroxy groups are behaving and uh, their nature so when they have taken ascorbic acid and uh, treated with methyl magnesium bromide so this is a very interesting and useful reaction for quantitative determination of hydroxy groups uh, where hydroxy group reacts with uh, this methyl magnesium bromide to give us methane gas okay methane gas is going to uh, be uh, evaluated so quantitative formation of methane gas gives us quantitative information of presence of oh groups or active hydrogen containing groups nucleophiles okay so here they found like four hydroxy groups are there but we need to determine what exactly are uh, is the contribution of oh groups towards acidity and for uh, further what they have done is one more reaction they treated with an oxidizing agent that is sodium hypochlorite to give dehydroascorbic acid okay so what is the difference between ascorbic acid and dehydroascorbic acid one mole of hydrogen So dehydroascorbic acid is uh, surprisingly it is neutral but when dehydroascorbic acid is exposed to air exposed to air uh, it again gave uh, back ascorbic acid and uh, this indicated that uh, there is definitely ketone kind of tautomerism can be there where uh, oxidation of uh, enol gives a ketone so thereby ketone cannot act as an acid so this is one observation next one is diazomethane when diazomethane is added diazomethane is a, a specific rea reagent which reacts with acidic oh groups let's say in case of phenol simple oh group will be there in case of acid co c double bond o oh will be there in both the cases it can react with uh, acidic hydrogen Hy acidic hydrogen is replaced with methyl group okay so this is the way how it reacts so thereby if if diazomethane reacts with an acid it gives an ester if diazomethane reacts with an enol it gives an enolic ether methyl ether so here in this we got dimethyl ascorbic acid indicating that uh, we, which is neutral it is indicating that there are two hydroxy groups uh, which are acidic which are contributing to acidity so this is a surprising and very useful observation because this actually supported why we have that pk value closely related to carboxylic acid so because pk value for ascorbic acid is 4.35 whereas pk value for acetic acid is 4.75 okay so uh, this observation of having two enols uh, uh, is actually Uh, helping us understand a little bit about its acidic nature the next one is dimethyl ascorbic acid obtained in this reaction was taken and then further treated with methyl iodide methyl iodide uh, reagent is an alkylating reagent so it will uh, convert alcohol to methyl ether if we got uh, the tetramethyl ascorbic acid And the next one is when uh, dimethyl ascorbic acid was treated with the benzoyl chloride or paranitrile benzoyl chloride a slightly acidic uh, more acidic uh, version they got dinitrobenzoyl 
dimethyl ascorbic acid means two units of paranitric benzoyl chloride were consumed so these two reactions clearly confirmed that two hydroxy groups are there it means what two hydroxy groups are there two enolic hydroxy groups are there in the ascorbic acid and uh, because we have four hydroxy groups are there we need to determine whether they are present next to each other or away from each other so here a simple reaction here what we can perform is treat it with acetone or ketone to uh, see whether it can form an acetal carbon okay so it uh, reacted with acetone and gave monoacetonide monoacetonide means one acetone reacts with two hydroxy groups to give an acetal carbon a cyclic uh, uh, product will come so it is possible only when we have a glycol okay so uh, acetonide formation is a uh, no, simple reaction we can use for determination of presence of glycol and another reaction we can use for glycol presence of glycol is lead acetate lead tetraacetate oxidative degradation okay lead tetraacetate degrades a glycol to give corresponding carbonyl products so here what they got is formaldehyde as one of the product okay formaldehyde uh, can come only when we have means h c h o can come only from c h 2 o h okay c h 2 the o h will become carbonyl and the bond between c and c is degraded so that it gives us aldehydes okay so that is the way how uh, lead tetraacetate uh, uh, reaction helps us understand the nature of uh, glycol so with the, all these reactions it is confirmed that the terminal carbon is actually a ch2oh okay uh, and then it's a glycol next to that one also hydroxy group is there so partially this is the way how structure uh, structural fragment structural information was obtained next uh, next uh, observation is the presence of lactone ring lactone ring determination of lactone ring presence as well as its constitution has changed the entire uh, no no uh, no chemistry of uh, La, uh, this one vitamin c because uh, at, till that time uh, the proposal of lactone ring or otherwise identification of lactone ring is the most important part of uh, vitamin c structural elucidation so observe closely so these are the reactions that we knew already so one is it has uh, a ketone tautomerism is present as well as it has uh, Uh, it's a, a two carbon unit and a four carbon unit attached to each other via a double bond and then tetramethyl ascorbic acid was taken tetramethyl ascorbic acid was taken uh, uh, that is uh, carbon number 10 c10h6o6 h16o6 and upon ozonolysis uh, surprisingly it gave them c10h16o8 means only oxygen addition is there okay that's fine but there is no degradation in carbon number because in usually in case of ozonolysis when you degrade ozonide ozon ozon uh, when you do ozonolysis uh, the compound degrades at double bonds okay so that smaller fragments are expected but here it is not fragmented what does it mean though we are fragmenting from one side it is attached from the other side it means that the compound is a, a cyclic compound okay it is the first and very clear observation of presence of a cyclic compound now uh, whether this cyclic compound this uh, this compound upon hydrolysis with barium hydroxide gave oxalic acid and l dimethyl threonic acid l dimethyl threonic acid okay so this confirmed that on one side it is connected via double bond because it is susceptible to ozonolysis on the other side it is connected via a hydrolyzable functional group like an ester group okay so if it is connected on one side via an ester group other way other side via a double bond okay alkane or alkene it doesn't matter the entire ring structure is what we call it as a lactone okay 
So this is the way how simply with simple logic scientists could confirm presence of a lactone ring inside <coughs> ascorbic acid structure. Further, this um, uh, ozonide ozonolysis product was treated with ammonia to give oxalamide and 3,4-dimethyl threonamide. This further confirmed that one of the carboxylic acids that we have, <coughs> okay is actually present uh, because in both the cases both the oxalic acid the carboxylic acid obtained in the form of oxalic acids as well as uh, l dimethyl threonic acid both are uh, amidated this further confirmed that the compound is a lactone now friends uh, this is what we started with we have two fragments Two carbon unit containing fragment and four carbon unit containing fragment. These two are joined via a double bond. Okay, and this on the other side we need to close it with an ester group. So when you add hydroxy groups also, we are going to have this structure. So scientists thought like we start with this structure, so they proposed it. Because this structure is explaining all these reactions. Let's say when you take this and then treat it with diazomethane, two diazomethane units are consumed so that dimethyl ether is obtained, which upon on further methylation you are going to get tetramethyl derivative, both are alcohols. And uh, in the beginning, I told you that we need to have a CHOH and CH2OH glycol part is needed. That is also possible only in this kind of arrangement on all in this kind of arrangement only. And upon ozonolysis, we are going to get this product. Okay, so this is the way how uh, uh, this particular structure, uh, ascorbic acid structure, is agreeing with all the reactions that we have seen so far. For any kind of a structural proposal, we need to synthesize it to confirm. So here what scientists have done is they synthesized ascorbic acid starting from uh, Lixos. Haworth and Hirst synthesis it happened in 1933 first attempt. Okay, Lixos was taken a known compound naturally available compound. They have uh, uh, done osozone formation. They simply took phenyl hydrogen and reacted with Lixos. Osozone formation is a known and diagnostic reaction we use for carbohydrates where carbohydrate otherwise the monosaccharide or the monosaccharide consumes two moles of phenyl hydrogen because here oxidation reaction also happens so that two moles of phenyl hydrogens are consumed so that osozone is formed so osozone can be hydrolyzed to obtain that keto aldehyde structure this is what what we call it as ozones ozone okay so this is lix ozone this is treated with uh, hydrogen cyanide to obtain cyanohydrin. Okay, cyanohydrin formation means aldehyde group reacted with uh, hydrogen cyanide to give us cyanohydrin. Because here we have both ketone and aldehyde, but aldehydes are highly reactive towards uh, nucleophilic addition type of reactions. So thereby we are getting cyanohydrin. Cyanohydrins upon hydrolysis gives us carboxylic acid, and uh, this is. Uh, uh, the starting material which is going to be uh, converted into uh, no ketone or tautomerism will come and then this upon slight heating in the presence of 8% uh, hydrochloric acid gives us ascorbic acid. So this is the first synthesis of uh, ascorbic acid but it is not high yielding reaction. Right now ascorbic acid is obtained in large quantity from both natural resources as well as some of the more developed synthetic procedures are there. So friends this is the way how uh, ascorbic acid structure is uh, determined. Now let us see the biological significance of ascorbic acid. Vitamin C is essential. It is not truly a vitamin because it is not a cofactor for any kind of an enzyme but it helps in maintenance of our biochemistry. It is a powerful antioxidant. So whenever and wherever oxidation reduction reactions are happening, vitamin C helps as a part of 
anti oxidant mechanism or otherwise free radical scavenging mechanism so that it assists in the redox uh, enzyme reactions and uh, it it has a key role to play in the hydroxylation of a benzene or benzene containing organic compounds as a part of our first uh, this one phase 1 metabolic reactions of liver next one is it is found to have a very important role to play in the biosynthesis of adrenal hormones because in case of adrenal hormones because adrenaline and noradrenaline while man, uh, biosynthesis of these oxidative decarboxylation is the key reaction uh, for uh, no biosynthesis of adrenal hormones because in case of adrenal hormones first one is uh, conversion of phenyl hydrogen uh, sorry phenyl uh, phenyl alanine to tyrosine and then tyrosine to no catecholamine synthesis in both the cases we need hydroxylation of benzene okay so there ascorbic acid is essential next one is in case of amino acid metabolism especially deamination reactions like uh, oxidative deamination and biosynthesis of uh, alpha keto carboxylic acids there a lot of oxidative stress is generated so it has to be minimized with the help of an antioxidant uh, mechanism we have uh, um, couple of more mechanisms are there like glutathione etc sulfur containing amino acids are also useful here but vitamin c has a wider role to play it's a detoxifying agent uh, toxicants like free radicals when they are generated uh, it can be uh, uh, ascorbic acid will detoxify them so friends this is the way how vitamin c plays so many uh, uh, important reactions uh, in our body uh, i hope you understood the way how uh, vitamin c structure is elucidated and um, its structure is confirmed uh needs a significance okay so friends please share uh, this video with your friends and uh, colleagues and uh, please subscribe to my youtube channel i'll come back to you with uh, more exciting videos soon and uh, see you all